Hi, Mike here. This video is inspired by a customer who had a table of data and needed to select five random rows from it. The data related to complaints and was subject to annual auditing by external auditors. The auditors would examine data from a random selection of rows from the full list. I'm not using complaints in this example, but the concepts and principles are exactly the same. Now there are several ways that you can generate random rows from a table and the method that I've chosen to use uses functions that are only available in Excel 365. It can be done with non-365 functions but it's not as smooth and not as slick. As usual if you want to follow along you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. At the start of every quarter, an external auditor audits excellent ice cream sales by looking at a random sample of their sales transactions from the previous quarter. So let's pretend it's April 2022. Here's the sales transactions from quarter 1 2022. They're stored in a table called sales. Over here, I have a second set of headings, below which the details for the randomly selected rows will appear. I need to first of all calculate how many rows are to be included in the sample and the auditors require the sample to be 25% of the number of sales transactions. I'm going to go over to L1 and in L1 I'm going to enter a formula. I'm going to use the rows function and what the rows function does is it will count the number of rows in the table that I specify inside the brackets which is called sales. I'm then going to go to L2 and I'm going to calculate 25% of that figure. So that would be equals L1 multiplied by 25%. Now I can't have part of a row, so I'm going to round up the result of the formula to the next whole number. I'll edit the formula and use the round up function. L1 times 25% is the number I want to round up and I want to round it up to no decimal places. The next step is to generate eight random numbers or it's eight in this example and that's because the sample size is eight but in future quarters it could be different. These numbers will represent the positions of the rows to be selected from the table. To do this, I'll use the rand array function, which is only available in Excel 365. So if I go to M1 and put equals rand array, open brackets, what this function does is generates an array or range of random numbers. You specify the number of rows and columns you need, the lowest value, the highest value, and whether you only want integers returned or whether it should return decimal numbers as well. So in this case, I want one column of numbers. The number of rows is determined by the value in L2. So I put L2 as the first parameter. I put one as the second parameter. The lowest value that can be returned is one and the highest value that can be returned is the number of rows in the table, which is in L1. Now what I'd forgot to do there was put in the optional parameter, which defines whether or not I want to return whole numbers or numbers including decimals. So I'll just edit that formula and then add in a final parameter, which in this case is true. If you don't specify true, it defaults to false which as you can see will generate numbers that include decimals. So now we have eight whole numbers. The rand array function is one of Excel's relatively new dynamic array functions. And simply put, this means that the array that is generated is elastic. It increases and decreases in size depending on how many values there are. And the blue border that you can see shows the size of the array. One thing to note, by the way, is that a rand array is what's called a volatile function, which means that it gets recalculated every time any change is made to any cell in this file. So if I just go to some random cell and type anything into that cell and press enter, 
you can see that the numbers in column M change. I guess that in this case, that doesn't matter because what we want is literally X number of integers generated randomly. But suppose that it did matter. You might have a situation where you want to generate random numbers and not have them change. In that situation, you'd have to copy the numbers and then paste values elsewhere in the spreadsheet. What paste values does is it pastes the results of the formulas. So you'd end up with a static copy of the numbers generated by the rand array function. Finally, I need to select the actual rows which will appear under the headings starting in F2. And for this, I'll use the choose rows function, which is used to select specific rows from a table based on their position within said table. So I'll go over to F2 and put equals choose rows, open brackets. Then I'll put sales, which is the array. It's the name of the table where the data is coming from. The row numbers that I want to include in this random selection are coming from column M. Now I could put M1 to M8, but that would always generate eight rows. What if in quarter two there were 100 sales and quarter three there were 20 sales? The sample size wouldn't always be eight because it's a percentage of the number of sales. So what I'm going to do is put M1 and then a hash sign. The hash symbol in a formula, when it comes after a cell that's the starting cell of a dynamic array, tells Excel to use all the values stored in the dynamic array that starts in that cell, M1 in this case. Close the brackets and enter. What I do need to do is format the cells in column F so they display as dates. And I'm not going to just format the cells with the numbers in that you can see. I'm going to format additional rows because I know that in the future, this list in columns F to I could expand. So if I go over to A2, use the format painter and just paint over as many cells as I think I might need. Let's just for this demo do about 50. We now have the dates displaying. So what it's actually doing is it's saying, OK, let's take the data from the 14th row of the table called sales and put it on row two in F to I and then take the data from the 11th row from sales and take the data from the 29th row of sales and so on. Before I wrap up, there is one more thing. Rand array can produce duplicates. So in theory, you could have two or more of the same value in the array. And because this scenario uses the generated values in column M to determine which rows are extracted from the table, the same row could appear more than once in the sample. Now, there's a couple of ways to deal with this. One uses a really convoluted formula, which I can't take credit for. I found it whilst researching, but I will put a link to the blog post in the description. A simpler way is to create a formula that checks whether the number of unique values in the array generated by Rand Array matches the number of required rows in the sample. So I'm going to go up to L3 and put equals count open brackets unique open brackets and select M1 and put a hash symbol. What that's showing me is that there are six unique values in the dynamic array that starts in M1. And you can see that that is true because there are two number 22s. So I'm going to now go to L4 and type equals if open brackets L2 equals L3. And then in double quotes, put OK, then a comma, and then in double quotes again, put problem. What that will do is it will put the word OK into L4 if the values in L2 and L3 are the same. And if they're not the same, it puts the word problem. So because right now we have two different values in L2 and L3, it puts problem.
So what I need to do now, because I have the word problem, is I need to regenerate the array. I can do that either by typing something, anything, into a blank cell, as I showed you earlier, or I can use function key F9. F9 is the recalculation key in Excel. By default, Excel is set up with automatic recalculation, which is why formulas automatically update. But you can switch a workbook to manual recalculation. This is done by going to the formulas tab, clicking calculation options and selecting manual. Why would you want to do that? Well, the usual reason is when you have a really large workbook that takes an age to recalculate. With manual recalculation on, formulas don't update until F9 is pressed. Now, this workbook, as you can see, is set to automatic recalculation, which means that whenever I type something into a cell, the values in the cells generated by RandArray update. But what if I want the array values to change, but I don't want to do it by typing something random into a cell? I can simply press F9, as I said, which forces all the formulas in the file to recalculate. So let me try that. If I go to any cell and I use F9, I can keep pressing F9 until I see OK. And once I see OK, I've now got eight unique values, eight different values in column M, and I'm not going to have any duplicates in the sample selection. Well, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.